Hello and welcome to the Ladies Football Show on the 42 in conjunction with the LGFA. My name's Emma Duffy, I'm your host today and I'm delighted to be joined in studio by Tipperary manager Shane Renan and by Meath captain Neil O'Sullivan. Welcome. Hi Emma. How are you? Good. We're back from a busy morning in the Crow Park Hotel, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, a long morning I suppose, but you know, it's, it's great to see the, the huge crowd there this morning and big media interest in it and um, you know, that's only, you know, it's only right for everybody who's involved in it and just you know, even from last year's um, Captain's Day, this is even bigger again, like, you know, and it's getting bigger all the time, so it's a fantastic morning. Absolutely, and it was a busy day for yourself as well, Niamh? Yeah, first time, first experience, so it was great, um, but it was also great to meet the other girls from the other teams as well, and to get chatting, you know, and hearing about how they got to the reach, they got to the final, so uh, yeah, no, it's been a fun morning. And I suppose looking back through, through the league as a whole, so Tip, obviously in Division 2, final against Cavan on Sunday and meet in the Division 3 final against Wexford on Monday you've both kind of had quite successful campaigns obviously to get to where you are um, and look it's all coming down to one big final on Sunday Yeah I suppose in, in the difference to the men's that both teams go up in the men's uh, and, you know s- Sunday and Monday's games it's winner takes all mm-hmm. and um, you know especially for the we say for the division 4 3 and 2 uh, to get to gain that promotion it, it's a huge thing and like last year with Tip um, you know took a replay to beat Wexford and it was so important we felt for our for our depression within the county and for our own team to get up into the into division two, and I'm sure um, you know Wexford and Mead are the same again Sunday. They want to progress, and if they, you know they want to win the All Ireland uh, this year to go up a senior, you know they're better off playing in um, in a higher division. You know and we've certainly uh, we feel that has really helped us this year. Now going f- going forward and going into the championship, that we are playing at a, at a higher higher grade, and I'm sure you know the girls in Wexford and and um, and Mead are going to feel the same about it. It's very important, and it adds a bit extra spice, I suppose, to the game that the winner the winner goes up and. Um, you know that's going to show it's going to make it you know very interesting games over the weekend absolutely and Shane I suppose like to be on the verge of division one football to come from winning division three last year and the intermediate title obviously in September like it's been an incredible rise for Tipperary yeah look I suppose um the year before even when we for for I got involved you know they got to the All Ireland semi final beaten by a point they lost the league final that year in the replay by a point so you know look we were going in working with um with, with good raw material um we didn't have to press a magic button uh, and all of a sudden it, it, it was going to it was going to work we built on what had been done the year before and um you know it was it, it was I suppose the disappointment of the year before drove the girls on and I suppose it got them over the line in games last year when maybe the previous year they hadn't got over the line and you know we won the tight games last year. And I think you know this year, then the girls have kicked on. And I suppose there was a big bounce after winning the All Ireland. There was a lot of confidence in the camp, and I suppose maybe the pressure was often as well. They were up, um, you know, maybe without we outside the camp, there wasn't a lot expected of us. You know, probably st- stay up in the division, but within the camp ourselves, like we, you know, we thought we could we could go far this year. And I suppose, but the pressure was off, and we were able to play with a little bit more freedom and things like that. And um, we achieved our goal of getting to semi finals. And when you get to semi final, you know, you want to win it. And the same as we're in the final now, you know. We want to win, like, and if we, you know, if we don't win, we'll be disappointed Sunday. But still, we have made great progress this year um, within Division Two, and a lot of awkward tri- trips there. And you know, we only lost one game to Waterford in the last the last league game. So look, we're very happy with where we're going, and um, hopefully moving in the right direction as we head into the summer for the championship. Absolutely, and I suppose Neve as well. Meath have had a fairly incredible rise. You know, you were kind of nearly down in the doldrums for a few years there, and to be contesting now a final and to be kind of back where you want to be, obviously that's a nice feeling. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic feeling because Mead uh, has been down in dumps, as you said, for a couple of years. Um, you know, it, there was a pl- problem with players going, you know, to J1s, and you know, you can't stop girls going away, and then you had girls that want to retire as well and, and finish off the game. So, we were just finding it hard to keep girls interested in Mead football, but uh, you know, luckily last year we got new management in and they've just revived the whole uh, team, the passion for the jersey. You know, everyone wants to go out and play for Mead now, and you know, the most important thing is we're getting minor players up, you know, they're making that transition to the senior team, so it's been absolutely fantastic. You know, we had a good uh, league camp game, we were happy, you know. At the start of the year, we you know we put out that we want to get at least the semi final, so we've done that, so we've got to the final now. But our next target is you know to win three games in a row because no me team has done that in, uh, in the last number of years. So you know, Monday's our third game in a row, so hopefully we'll come out the right side, absolutely. And I suppose looking at you know those few years where things were a bit down for me, like you know, there was kind of changing with management and girls weren't coming through and stuff like that. Look now. Like there's some incredible underage players like who have made the leap up to senior and they're really kind of 
pushing you on as well. Yeah, like we have five girls in at the moment. We have like Judy, who's the sub goalie. Katie New, who's our cornerback, she starts. Um, Orla Lally, who's the fullback, she's starting for us as well. And we have Ali, another uh, goalie. Um, so like there's loads of minors there um, that are coming up. And like it's great to see they really push us on at training. Um, so And it was great to see as well, because me got into Leinster A final. Um, minor Leinster final on Sunday unfortunately we, we lost to Dublin but it was great to see you know me competing at a Leinster A final you know of course and I suppose as well like looking at kind of club wins like with Dunboyne and then even looking at Vicky Wall winning O'Connor Cup with DCU all these things kind of kind of help boost morale as well yeah it's been great like Dunboyne have won the junior two years ago and then last year they won the intermediate All-Ireland so I'm sure they'll be looking to go for the senior All-Ireland this year and they'll be out you know they'll be set out they'll be setting out to you know win the meet um, club championship this year um, and then you have Avian Cleary there as well for Ashburn you know so it's great to have two meet girls in the DCU and win a team and we also had two girls on the Dundalk team unfortunately they didn't win their final but it was great to have a few girls involved in that college weekend absolutely and I suppose Shane looking at a tip um, obviously all attention right now is on Cavan on Sunday and the league final but you know Munster is just around the corner as we say yeah look um, I think that the, the benefit of getting to the latter stages of the league and uh, is is that you get competitive games in the lead up to the, your provincial championships like and I suppose since the draw Munster draw was made there and um, at the end of February or something like that um, you know Cork has been on the horizon and it, it's it's certainly a game that we're really looking forward to. Um, you know, a bit of apprehension as well. Are we ready for that step up? You know, to play the, the you know the the queens of, of ladies football, like you know, and that's the standard we want to be at. And I suppose when you going out to face Cork, you know, can we compete with them? And you know, I suppose we've geared a lot of what we're doing towards that. And having these competitive games like the last day against Armagh and against Cavan on Sunday again w- will prepare us well. We think for. Um, for the Cork game, you know, if we'd been beaten last Sunday, we've had a, we would have a six-week gap to our next competitive game. Look, we have a four-week gap after this week uh, after Sunday's game. You know, it should give us enough time to get things right again if if anything goes wrong. And um, you know, like that Cork game has, is really important, for us and we we you know we're ready to have a cut off them. Like you know, and look, we know we're going to have to make a lot of improvements. You know, to be to be even competitive with them, but that's where the girls want to be. They want to be playing against the best teams in the country, and you know, that's where we we'll, we'll see whether we're, we're at the standard or not. And if we're not. We'll have, we'll have time to go in and work on it again before we go into the All-Ireland Series. And if we do 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 well against Cork, you know, it should give the girls great confidence going forward for the rest of the summer. Of course, and I suppose there is that bit of spice as well. Like, you know, you've been involved with Cork teams. You obviously have been over Morn Abbey as well. So there is that bit of kind of competitive edge. Yeah, look, um, <laughs> Morn Abbey training, at, you know, a couple of matches played this year and, you know, the, there's a bit of banter going on. And um, I think I said I, I might skip Morn Abbey for two weeks before the game because, uh, <laughs> look, there's a lot of Morn Abbey involvement in the Cork team. And look, I was there myself for a couple of years and um, you know I've, you know I had two great years with them and you know I've great respect for everybody who's involved there you know all the players and the, you know I know, I know the management as well they, they were you know they were very good to us with UCC and things like that and you know um, I suppose Elaine Hart as well like Elaine has the eight, eight or Ireland's medal one, one with Cork as well like so uh, you know does it does it does a big Cork involvement within, within the tip panel and uh, you know there's going to be I suppose uh, great interest in the game you know we, we were down at you know Bridge of Brian's funeral last week and. Um, there was fierce talk about the you know the tip cock game you know and uh, there's going to be there's going to be great interest and it'll be it'll be a very interesting couple of weeks and as I said I think I might uh, I might skip more Abbey training for a while because you know the banter will be too much and um, but look the girls it's, it's, it's very good natured and we've all got a healthy respect for each other and you know they know that and they've look they they know the tipper um, tipper going well as well and they've a lot of respect for the tip players they've seen them you know in UCC and DCU and UL you know they're they're, they're playing at the top level in colleges so they're you know cock know that that tipper tipper a good team absolutely and i suppose you mentioned bridget there as well and we were just speaking off air about how it's been kind of a, a very tough few weeks um just for ladies football in general of course with Rachel Keneally passing away too that must have been difficult yeah look it, it has been there the last few weeks um i suppose you know a month ago, and when we when we found out Rachel hadn't hadn't long to live, um, you know it was a very tough time for a lot of the panel who had played with her. Um, you know I, I was involved with her for a couple of years at minor level, and uh, she played in this, when the senior team when I was when I was last involved. Um, you know, and I suppose the, the girls looked at Delbert very well, and um, you know they're they're a very resilient bunch, and um, 
they, you know, there was a great uh, turnout at, at our funeral and things like that, and I think it showed how, how strong ladies' football is in Tipperary. And look, the wider community in Tipperary really uh, banded together and uh, you know got behind their family and things like that. And look, it has been a couple of couple of tough weeks, and but the girls are, you know, they're as I said, they're very resilient, and um, you know they know they've they've they've, they've someone looking down on them now who played with them and soldier with them, and uh, she was very important to everybody involved. And you know, um, look, I think they've they've honoured her memory already, and you know. I, you don't like to overplay it, um, you know. The, the, but she is looking down, and we know that, and she's willing them on because uh, you know it was very important last year in the All Ireland final. The previous time they've been in the Ireland final, Rachel played cornerback, mm-hmm. and you know we were very aware of the fact that she was going to be at the match, and we we really wanted to when were, people were a bit tired, maybe in the All Ireland final day, just to give that a little bit extra. But we knew Rachel, if she hadn't been sick, you know she probably would have been, and in a way she probably would have been involved with us because that's the kind of caliber of player she was, and I suppose with Bridget as well, um, you know, for myself and Elaine and. Who were, who were involved with Cork, you know, uh, Bridget was a fantastic lady and she was brilliant to all of us. And, you know, she's texted me before all the, the tip games last year and after all the games as well. And, you know, she was at all the Mornabby games and she was a great lady. And I know that John, her husband, and the family were, were delighted with the turnout last week um, at her funeral, you know, both on the Sunday night's removal and at the burial. And, you know, there was a huge Cork turnout. Um, you know, there were so many All Ireland medals there, it was unreal. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, she was very, very proud of the fact that she was involved with Cork and she was a fantastic lady to, and fantastic person to everybody who was involved she was like a mother to us all and the same to me you know um you were treated like one of her own and she was just a, a great presence and she'll be you know she's sadly missed and she won't be forgotten and rachel won't be forgotten but you know i think it just brings together the importance of sport in at these tough times that, that people can can stick together and um you know that they they can work their way through it and it just gives a perspective on life Rachel had a fantastic perspective on life even when she was sick she you know, didn't let it get to her mm-hmm. she was very positive all the time and you know I think that, that shone through to everybody who, who knew Rachel and I think that goes through the team as well like just things are going wrong and you have a bad day or whatever Like, but you get up and you get on with it and you, you know you, you put a brave face on you and you just drive on and I think that's uh, epitomised by the way our own girls have dealt with it and you know they're just driving on they, they won't forget her but uh, you know she is driving them on Absolutely, and I suppose you touched on that that sense of kind of community within ladies football and within the GA in general. And like, obviously, being involved with a team environment, there's kind of nothing like it, isn't there, Neve? No, there isn't, because you're literally living with each other nearly. Because you see each other m- more than you see your family and maybe your other friends. And um, you're out like three to four nights a week, if not five. So like, it, it's a great buzz. Like, you do look out for each other, and you know, if you're having a bad day. The girls are there to pick you up, you know. And like our manager, Aim would often say when he took over, like he wanted to create the fun element back in, especially with Mead. And he said, the minute we came into the gate, leave your problems alone, come in and just do an error and have the crack. But obviously, it come, you have to put in the serious effort as well. But it, all, it does come down to that. Like the girls, you, you do have a little family in there and you do look out for each other. And it's no better. You can't you can't uh, describe the bond. It's just, it's, it's amazing to be part of. Absolutely. And I suppose you've been involved with Mead for, for quite a while now. Um, you came in when you were what eighteen? Or yeah, so? eighteen. Yeah, um, I came in for a few years, and you know uh, it was hard because I was young and I wasn't used to it. Um, I remember one of the games was being televised, and I'm sure I'd never experienced that before. But I was lucky. I had a club mate, Karen Bow, on the team, and she was just you know said just look, it's another game at the end of the day. Don't worry about it. And then you know I got a few injuries, and I decided to step away and concentrate on my my club football. The confidence was down as well. So then uh, two years ago, I got asked back in, and I haven't looked back since. Brilliant, good stuff. And I suppose you mentioned there about you know a game being televised back then, and I suppose it must have been a huge, huge deal. How much do you think like ladies football in general has come on over the last few years? Like I suppose this year there have been a few kind of li- landmark things, but like obviously TG Car have been brilliant through the years, but air sponsorship and their live viewings and stuff like that, and then just you know just media attention in general and just interest has completely come up oh totally like back then when i started playing it was an odd game that was on television now it's like there's a good few league games like in all the division one two three and four is being televised this year so you know last year i think it was three and four were streamed so that's a huge step in itself and then we have little on board this you know the last few years as well who've like really um helped you know get the ladies football out there and especially across worldwide i think it's becoming big in australia even abu dhabi dubai like it's coming huge in america as well so it's great like even at the launch this morning the amount to media people there like and asking you for interviews you're kind of like oh what's going on here so yeah no it's it's amazing it's you know it's only going to start keep growing and um, it's great like it's great for you know the ladies to get a bit of recognition because we do put in just as commitment as men 
Absolutely. And I suppose, Shane, you've been involved with the ladies game for a long time too. So you've seen it kind of develop and grow too. Yeah, look, it's 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 gone massive. And, um, you know, I, I think the people are beginning to recognise, you know, how good a product it is. And they enjoy the games, and there's um, you know, there's, there's there's so much intensity in the games, and you know all you know the four division one and division two semi finals were all tight games mm-hmm. and fierce excitement. I can you know, and I'm sure the four games at the weekend will will be huge again. And you know people are you know people who aren't watching it are starting to watch it, and you know it's it's a good product. And um, you know the even the, the club final, so many people watch the club final. You know it was it has huge viewership the the Morning Abbey and Carnacon game, and you know I just think. People are realizing like this is this is good to watch, and it's um you know that the effort as Neve said like there's huge effort put in, mm-hmm. so huge sacrifice being made by the players, and um you know they're doing just as much as the men, and um you know I think they're getting the recognition, and they're you know I suppose they're they're starting to to showcase themselves a bit better as well, like you know and like the media interest has become has become has become very big, and um you know as I said even compared to last year's you know captain's day this mm-hmm. one is way bigger today and you know i think it's only going to get bigger like and you know shows like this is you know it's just, it's just fantastic to the, the sponsorship that you know the teams are able to, to attract themselves and you know um the, the government grant and all these things like you know, all these things these things are progress like you know wgba the day they had the other day last saturday like for players you know all these things are bringing the game on and players know that they you know they have to treat it seriously, and and they are like, and this, the standard has just gone through the roof. And same even the club scene, it, it's it's huge, and the the school scene as well. Like there's so many exciting games this year, like and you know new teams winning it, and you know as Marie Hickey said this morning, they moved to new schools that are playing ladies football. Mm-hmm. It's huge, like even in the current climate where you know school sports have become is become more difficult to, to you know to, to, to keep going. Um, but it's it seems to be getting stronger and stronger every year in every province. Absolutely, and I suppose as a teacher yourself, you're really involved with with teams and whatnot. Down in care. Down in care, yeah, Klosh and Eastgate, um, you know, I suppose uh, we were talking about this morning that, you know, we have a huge member m- membership of the panel with Tipperary, yeah. like, you know, the last day the game finished with 10 players, one is a current student and nine were, uh, nine, nine of the girls who finished the, that game were, you know, former students at the school and, you know, I suppose we're, we train out of there as well, like, you know, we're, mm-hmm. we're very grateful to the, to, to my boss below, you know, Peter Creedon and, you know, that we have that facility and it's great to have a base, I was just on the eve about that, it's, when you have a base, it's mm-hmm. fantastic, you know, you're not looking for pitches and things like that and, um, you know, we're very lucky and I suppose look, the school, school scene in Tipperary was very good this year, like, the, um, um, the Red Hook Clamell got to the All-Iron Final in the B, or sorry, in the A, they were, they were beat by Loretto Cavan and um, Prez Turles got to the B final and you know they, they unfortunately lost as well to Glen and Maddie but and three tip schools won the three top competitions amongst us A, B and C mm-hmm. so um, you know it, it's progressing all the time and you know and he was saying there about schools getting or the underage teams getting to um, getting to getting the finals mm-hmm. like the tip under 16s be Cork and Saturday there in the final against uh, against um, Kerry at the weekend and tip under 14s are playing you know, having a replay against uh, Kerry, they were only beaten by a point the last time. There was a bit of controversy. I think was it's in into a replay. You know, there's nothing. The teams are, you know, all these teams are progressing, and the school situation is really helping that. Like you know, there was a under 15 blitz there in uh, Tipperary the other day, and like there was so many schools at it. Like you know, it was fantastic to see the, in Rockwell. There was, I don't know, there was seven or eight pitches going at the one time, yeah. and you know, you know, great credit to Tony Smith there um, for organising that, and John Ryan in Rockwell. And it's just huge, huge interest in it, and um, girls want to go out and play, and they're they're looking up to. I suppose the, the, the more exposure you're getting, the, their heroes mm-hmm. now are you know the players that they see on television and they, they they know them all like you know. Whereas before they didn't really know them, and I suppose they only knew players would have only known maybe the Cork were supposed to be the biggest team. Absolutely. They knew, the, but now they're getting to see players from every county, and look, that's fantastic. And you know, long may that to continue because it's it's so important in school now with the, the you know well being and, and, and the, you know it's so important in, in within the school setting about the healthy minds and all that and healthy body and like, to have them playing these games and giving them the opportunity is fantastic. And you know everybody's trying to do great work out there, and hopefully it'll continue and hopefully it'll keep it get stronger of course and I'm right in saying you're a teacher too right? yeah primary yeah. school teaching Brilliant. yeah so like we have boys and girls teams so you know we encourage at that level you know to get involved um, and you know during PE lessons we also incorporate our Gaelic into PE but also it's just you know at the end I'd you know encourage kids to play and have fun like and then we have a development officer coming in from the local club as well you know to try and entice kids to join as well so no it's been it's really healthy and you know the, my own club are the girls underage is flying like we have two teams nearly at every level and it's just growing and growing and growing constantly so it's it's great to see it brilliant and you're teaching away near home is it yeah in st jocelyn's national school so yeah no i love it so they'd be uh, they'd be missing me today but sure be grand <laughs>
<laughs> will any of them come out now on Monday and see their hero? Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't given away much information to them yet. I kind of don't get. They try and distract me to talk about football, but you know it is important maths to be taught in Irish, so I don't talk about it too much. But uh, yeah, I'm sure some of them will come down and support me. Absolutely, and I suppose as well, you know to have your evenings and weekends it does kind of go hand in hand with with football oh yeah like you know there's a few te- a few there's a good few teachers in our panel and the me team and there's actually one girl who Kate Byrne she's actually uh, was a nurse and she's gone back to do teaching and it's just it's the hours and you know it's just suits football you know you have your weekends free and you have your evenings free and you know you can give more commitment you know you can be fully committed like you know there's girls there that come straight from work and like it, you know they're given just as much commitment as I'm given but it must be tough on their bodies because they're literally up at, you know 7 o'clock 8 o'clock in the morning into work for 9 and then they're not leaving work to 5 half 5 and then they're going straight to train and like you know it's fair play to them I take my hat off to them but you know is it really healthy for them to come straight to training? Luckily, with us this year, we've got dinners after training, so we're sorting out those girls and making sure you know they're properly looked after. Absolutely, and I suppose, Shane, as well, you're teaching PE, um, so that kind of goes hand in hand as well, and, you know, obviously kind of transferring things over and back between teams. and, and Yeah, I suppose, you know, I try maybe to stay away from the ladies' football in, in PE and GA <laughs> because you know, you're at it every night of the week, you'll be trying different things with them, but <laughs> giving them giving different experiences. But I suppose, look, at it, we're trying to make it as important as possible to PE and to keep them fit and healthy and active and things like that and it's it, it's hard in the current climate with the you know there's so much pressure on them with the you know the new classroom based assessment and things like that it, it's become you know it's going to be sidelined a bit like you know and a lot of the stuff that's been said in the media about this great thing about PE becoming an exam mm-hmm. subject I think a lot of it it's, to be honest with you it's, it's just talk because the elite students are going to do PE anyway uh, for, for their leaving the same as the best musicians do do the music and things that I don't think having PE as an exam subject is going to solve the obesity problem we have in the country and I think you know more you know the department and the NCA need to look at things like that that you know more emphasis should be put on the wellness and things like that and the, the sports side of things and the extracurricular and it is becoming more difficult to get school teams out because of the classroom based assessment and things like that and I don't think that was ever taught of by the department mm-hmm. uh, when they were coming up with these things but you know within the P department in, in school like you know we try to promote as much you know we try to stay away from maybe the mainstream stuff mm-hmm. and get them playing different things and you know and just encourage them like you know, go for a walk in the leaving search and get them to go for a walk they're stressed out you know mm-hmm. with, their, with their studies like they don't really want to maybe do P but just get them go for a walk and things like that and you know they can switch off and things like that and it's so important like that they can de-stress and you know that's something we we try and do as much as we can with, within the P department and care um just to look after those kind of things as well like it's so important look we see it ourselves you, know, you need to switch off and they, they need to switch off as well especially the girls doing their you know girls and boys doing their leaving sort of like and it's such a stressful time of the year for them but you know going off for a 20 minute walk half an hour walk is so good for them like you know to just switch off like and I suppose that's something we try and encourage as much as we can and you know just as I said the, I suppose the department and the NCCA need to start looking at those things instead of coming up with all these these great ideas about classroom based assessment and when you can't go we know now last year next year there's going to be curtailment in, in, in sport and in lots of competitions I know that in TIP in the, in the boys section we've decided to end some competitions put them into blitz days because mm-hmm. t- teachers can't be gone for four days instead of so they've just gone for one now and you know that's you know that that's just the way it has to be, and I suppose that's the way it's going to have to go forward with lots of sports, which is which is disappointing. Like, but um, you know, like we'll try and adapt as much as we can, and hopefully, maybe there can be you know changes to come again in the future with regards to all those classroom based assessments. Good ideas, but they, they they seem to forget about the fact that the kids are going to be trying to do an extra curricular as well, not just sport, music, whatever you know, drama. And, you know, it's just curtailing all those things. So hopefully, you know, when they do their next review, that they might think about that, the importance of importance of physical activity and wellness and things like that, and which is so important for everybody. You know, I think it, it surveys are done now at the moment. What te- parents are asked, you know, and, uh, what, what you f- want most out of your child f- from secondary school and that they're, they're healthy and they're happy, you know, and and that, that, that we need, to, you know, the increased P, the increased time for things like that you know, that there's time out for things like that and, you know, I think hopefully going forward things can improve in that. Absolutely, and I suppose at primary level you have plenty of heat for your kids. Yeah, yeah, no, um, there's a new um, initiative in uh, Active Schools Week, so we've uh, entered that, uh, Una Crown from our school took on that and like we won the Active School flag last year um, so we just have a week long of uh, different activities. It's not concentrating on any um, particular sport. It's just different activities, getting kids out there to experience all different 
um, activities and really to get them out and, and exercise you know as Shane said like there is a problem obviously in, in, in Ireland and you, you can see it like there is you see it sometimes when the kids come in and they're on about fortnight and all these programs and they're just glued to it mm-hmm. so you know it's very important that in like secondary schools or in primary schools that we do you know get the kids out and exercise you know it's uh, just it's very important and you know keeps them healthy and also keeps their mind off things mm-hmm. Absolutely, and I suppose I actually forgot to mention, but Shane, on your way to win the All-Ireland with Tip last year, it was actually me the beating the semi-finals, so look, we're all soon friends, aren't we? Yeah, no, like, um, no, that was, like, well, we won Leinster, you know, we bet Wexford, and, you know, I'd say a lot of people thought that was a shock at the end of the day, but we were delighted, and we were always setting out to win Leinster, and then we um, bet Clare in the quarter-final, and that was like one of the best matches I've ever played in. It was literally up and down the field non-stop. And then we got uh, to Prairie uh, in Turles. Like, I think a lot of us were mesmerised when we walked into Turles because mm-hmm. no one had seen like such an amazing stadium yeah. with restrooms. It really, we were just mesmerised and amazed by it. Like, um, you know, like their unbelievable side, the likes of like Ashley Maloney, Ashley McCarthy, and even Samantha in the backs there, like Eyes Mark Samantha, and she just, just doesn't give you an inch. So mm. we knew going into that was going to be a battle, but we uh, we said it also that we'd nothing to lose. Like, you know, no one ever thought Mead would have been in an All Ireland semi final. And, you know, at the end, we, within a goal of them was, was mm. pretty amazing. And um, even though I did go to the All Ireland final, and it was tough to watch. Yeah. I was delighted to see Tipperary uh, win at the end of the day. Like, these are they're a great team, and to go unbeaten, you know, all last year, that's, that's amazing team and I have to say I, I'd be you know I reckon they're going to be a dark horse in the senior championship this year. Absolutely what you have to say about that team? I look you know the, we, I suppose we were we had our goal set on winning the All-Ireland last year and mm. you know as Neve said we, like, we got a world win start against them and we went I don't know 13 or 14 mm. points up and um, in fairness to them they kept plugging away plugging away plugging away and like, the match probably went down for four minutes longer like mm. there was absolute heart attacks on the sideline and <laughs> you know and uh, I think I lost a bit more here but um <laughs> You know, I, it was look. I, I was at their game against Clare, and they were losing against Clare as well. And they they came back and, and won that day. Like, and it was as Neve said, it was, it was a super game of football. Like, and um, you know, we knew that we'd have to be a, a very right, and we I suppose we were very right at the start of the game and for the first half or so. And I suppose maybe maybe there was a bit of a lull and a bit of we got a bit complacent. The players did like, and um, you know, they took their eye off the ball. And I suppose it actually helped us going forward. If we had won the match, maybe by ten points. Uh, we might have been a bit complacent going into the mm-hmm. final, and we certainly weren't. Then everybody knew they had to concentrate all the time. Like that, when you're playing the standard of team like Mead and Tyrone and and Wexford and all these teams, you can't take your eye off the ball, and you you know you, ha- you have to be concentrated all the time. And it certainly concentrated the minds for the Ireland final. And you know we were we were we were very cognizant of that going into it. That we had to stay concentrated, and you know that was testament to the way Mead came back. And look, I'm not surprised to see them in a Division Three final this year. They, they made a huge improvements, as Neve said mm-hmm. last year. You know, after a couple of couple of games, we we played them in the first maybe t- game three game three last year, and we beat them well. But they made a huge strides mm-hmm. from there, and Absolutely. you know, and and they've kept it going this year. Like you know, I would have I, it would have been the final kind of I was expecting. Like I knew Wexford would be there thereabouts mm-hmm. as well. Like you know, and it's going to be a real tight game. Like you know, Wexford were very unlucky last year. Took a replay to for us to beat them, yeah. beat them by beat them by two points, and in the championship we only beat them by a point after extra time you know and that's the standard they're at and like to you know the two of them I think you know would be there thereabouts as the year goes on for for the All-Ireland glory as well like and you know and as I said they really would really want to win Sunday so they're up in Division 2 next year mm-hmm. and it's so important to get up there like and uh, look I wish them the very best looks on the they are a good team and there's lots of good players there Absolutely and I suppose Neve looking at Wexford on Monday Yes, yeah, Monday, I'm, I'm yeah. so confused Monday. between the days. So <laughs> the Division One and Two finals are on Sunday. So Tip will be playing Cavan, yeah. and then the Division Three and Four finals are on Monday in Burr. Um, but yet, looking at Wexford, obviously, you know, you beat them in the last final last year. There is kind of that bit of that bit of competitiveness between you. It's going to be a tough contest. Yeah, and especially in the the group game um, down in Enniscorthy, they they bet as well. Now we had a few girls missing. I'm sure they had a few girls missing, but we like we knew that was going to be tough. We played, you know, first 15 minutes really well, and then, I you know, we just lost complacency. Maybe we couldn't believe ourselves that we were up by six points at half time. We didn't know what was going on. Maybe we were not really used to that. But uh, Wexford then kicked in gear, and, and they just took control of the second half, and then we we got a sim bin as well, which didn't help. 
um, our situation. But like we know, you know, going down to Burr on Monday, it's not going to be any easy task beating them. We know it's going to be a hard game. Um, like they love, you know, giving quick kick outs. You know, Mary Rose will be on the ball. She'll be giving the ball a quick kick out and the, they'll have the runners coming through. But, you know, we've been practicing stuff at training to try and counteract that. So, do you know, what? it's going to be a great game. I can't wait to, you know, play it. And I wish it was actually tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to get out yeah, there. Yeah, can't wait to get out, out, out there. So yeah, looking forward to it. Brilliant. And I suppose then looking at Parnell Park on Sunday, Shane, two two big games of football, and of course you're focusing on yourselves and Calvin. Calvin were there last year. They lost the um, the replay, so you know they're going in for it too. I looked the early. They were they were very lucky last year. The first mm-hmm. day they should have won it, I suppose. Um, and Westmead, Westmead kind of pulled away the second day. All mm-hmm. right, um, but we played them early on in the year beat them by three points um, I think we were nearly full strength that day they were missing Brona Sheridan missing um, and missing Don English as well like you know and a couple of more and they, they seem to the cha- team has changed a bit like and especially as well as those two players are probably the most well known who were missing and they were certainly very good in the semi-final um, you know and we know like you know James is a very experienced manager like you, he he brings success wherever he's gone. Mm-hmm. You know, got promotion with Longford last year. Was very successful there uh, with Queens. I know him fairly well, and you know they're they will have they'll have serious um, want a bit like our own ones from last year. You know they want to get up to Division Two after, or sorry, Division One after losing mm-hmm. Division Two final last year. Like our girls last year lost the Division Three final, wanted to get up to Division Three or say, go to Division Three, and like, mm-hmm. you know it's um it will be tough going. You know, and uh, but look, I think if we pay to our potential. Um, but there'll be nothing in it. I think it'll be. You know, it's, it's a real 50-50 game, and look, we'd be we're happy with where we are in our preparations, and hopefully a couple of little niggly injuries we have will clear up, and we'll be both full strength on Sunday and both go at it, and you know, may the best team win because it, it will. It should be a very good game, and look, the division four and final is going to be a great game as well. Like you know, it's going to be a very entertaining weekend of ladies football, and you know, that's what we want. You know, we don't want uh, one-sided games and things like that, and I think the, you know all the, the the two best teams in each division have probably got to the final at this stage, and you know. Let the best, the best teams win. Absolutely, and I suppose just quickly on the Division One final. So obviously, Dublin Mayo with the repeat of last year's uh, All Ireland Senior final. Quick one, call it. I I'm actually going to go with Mayo. Mayo. Yeah, I just think in the last few games they seem to be getting goals. Um, so yeah, no, I think uh, Sarah Rowe will be on fire, and the two Kelly sisters I think will will uh, drive it home for Mayo. Absolutely, Shane. Um, I'm going to go with the Dubs because I think. Um, <laughs> I think they, they were very disappointed with their with their semi final performance. I'm sure there was a, a big step up in intensity and training, and they have never won Division One. You know, we beat them there in 2014. Um, came back at them. Uh, they know they had won the, the the league final. We got we won it by two points in the end. Um, I think I think they really have a focus on it. They want to win it. Mm-hmm. And look, Mayo have been flying as well. It's going to be really tight. But I just think maybe Dublin Dublin's desire to to get it, get that league title might swing it for them. Absolutely. Well, look, we're looking to looking forward to four very entertaining games of football over Sunday and Monday and also the Division 4 final between Louth and Wicklow is on in Burr as well is that on before or after you guys? Uh, no that's on before too yeah okay cool well look thank you very much for calling into the studio Neve and Shane thanks a million and best luck now on Sunday and Monday and thank you very much for tuning into the ladies football show and we'll be back soon for more ladies football chat thank you